Hi, everybody. I just wanted to jump on here and re-record the May door hanger of the month for you, seeing that my computer bumped out the last recording. So what you're going to do is you're going to unwrap everything. Unfortunately, this will not be an interactive class because I'm re-recording it, so it's a bummer, but we'll get it done. All right, so you're going to go ahead and take off all your letters off of your backboard. Take off your flag. There's a couple pieces to that. Your truck, move all this stuff aside. We're going to work on our background first. So if you have a wet paper towel or a baby wipe or something that you want to use to get the background cleaned up, feel free. Make sure to get it all in there. Let me raise it up just a little bit because I think that I'm a little short. Okay. All right, so now you can see most of it. So go ahead and just take your damp paper towel or even a dry paper towel. You're just getting all the dust off so that it doesn't show up on your picture so much or your board so much. And it is dusty. See here, you can see that it is a little dusty. So got all the dust off. I'm going to save these for the next step. I'm just folding them the other way so I don't have the dirt. We're going to need to, you see two, if, you, if you're watching the recording and you're wondering why um, there's two of my names on there, it's because in order to put the view big, I have to, um, I have to put on two, at least two people or it just records me and my logo. So I learned that the hard way. You're gonna take a little bit of white paint and we're gonna make our background first so we can let this dry. And I think I gave you guys a bigger um, foam brush, but I'm not gonna use a foam brush. I'm gonna use just a regular brush because I like to save those for the customers. You're gonna just go back and forth with your white first. And if you want to um, just do white and not do any of the gray in the background, you're more than welcome to do that. But just go back and forth with your white first, get in some white. And I don't do everything right away. I kind of skip around here. And just go back and forth, getting in most of it because you're going to use your damp paper towel or baby wipe to kind of give it that, you know, that distressed look. And we'll use some of the gray for that. So I put in a little white first and then I go back and I do that. And you can go all the way to the edges. I mean, I'm just not for whatever reason, no particular reason. Probably lack of space here due to the stand only going so tall and my little short fat arms here. All right, so once you have some of that in, what you can do is you can take a little tiny bit of your black paint because you have the majority of the white down and you're just gonna take a little squirt, like, I mean, like a less than a quarter size, like a pea size almost, because you can see here, I don't have very much at all. So now I'm gonna take that same white brush and I'm gonna, and you can use this with your foam brush and just touch the corner of it to that and then just kind of tap it into your white. You don't even have to mix it too well. See how it's very lightly streaked? So now I'm gonna take that and just kind of go back over and put some of that on my board. 
And the reason you're doing the mostly the white first is because you don't want it to be over powerful gray. You want it to kind of just be very lightly in there. So once I did that, I'm gonna go and take this baby wipe that I had from before. And now I'm gonna just kind of rub it back and forth on my board. And this helps just blend in the paint and kind of bring it to the ends and gives it that distressed look. You see how we're doing that? We're taking this paint and we're just kind of rubbing it out. You can use a damp paper towel too. Baby wipes work a lot better. Don't ask me why. I think it's the alcohol in the wood and the pulling up the grain, et cetera. So, um, but you can use even a, a wet uh, damp washcloth too, an old washcloth if you don't have any baby wipes. I know not everybody has kids and a lot of you do, but. So then if you feel like you need a little more paint, just add a little more paint and then just take that whatever thing you're using and just wipe it to the end of the board. Give it that distress look. You're also blending your paint out. It's a very easy way to give it a stained look. I'm going to rotate this around just because I'm short. Hold on a minute. I got something open. There we go. It's making all kinds of noise. All right. This one isn't too bad once you get going on it as far as difficulty levels. Um, we've had worse, um, had more challenging ones, I should say, not worse, more challenging. I think next month's door hair is gonna be super cute. We voted on the, Summer Breeze one. I ordered a couple extra because I have a few people outside the door hanger in the month club that saw it posted on my page. Can always order more. I have a feeling I'll be doing a class with that. Probably coming up at the brewery, but you guys will get first dibs. All right, so once you get the backboard to where you like it, how you like it, Go ahead and just set it aside and let it dry. I think I need just a little more white in here. I feel like it's a little too gray. Well, the truck's gonna cover most of it up anyway, so not really worried about it. And then if you get any paint over the edges, just use that wet paper towel, baby wipe, whatever it is, and just go back over and kind of clean up your edges if you want. Okay, like I said, the truck's gonna go right here, so I'm not gonna worry too much about that. I'm just gonna put a little tiny bit more at the way bottom, just because when the paint dries, it sucks it in. All right. Rub it out a little bit so it's not so white. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside. I'm pretty happy with it. Let this dry. I'm going to get a clean paper towel here. I mean, baby wipe, whatever. I'll just wipe off my hands. Next, we're going to work on our flag here. It's all so these pieces can dry. Move this aside. These are gonna be white. All right. 
So all of this, you're gonna paint white first, except for the handle, the, the pole right here. So you can take a little bit of tape if you want. If you wanna freehand it, feel free. You don't have to do this part. And I'm just gonna tape off my pole here because all of this is gonna be white. So I'm gonna tape this off. Maybe. There we go. And then I'm gonna use just plain white paint. And you can use your foam brush if you have regular brushes laying around. Feel free to use those if you wanna save some of these foam brushes for another project. Whatever works best for you. And paint all of this white, at least one coat, because um, probably gonna need two coats just to have the white shine up more. You can also use a makeup sponge with this if you want. You don't wanna use your foam brushes up. I think in your kit, you get a little bit of everything, so. And if any of you need regular paint brushes, I sell a whole pack. I know sometimes they're hard to find good ones at the store, but I sell a pack for five bucks. And it's a pretty decent student pack. It's called a student pack and it's, it's talcon brushes, which I use all the time in all my classes. So if you need any, let me know. Some of you might have some that I've given with different kits. I'm not sure. Or if you've bought in a canvas kit before in the past. But in the door hangers, we don't use brushes as that much. I just use them in the background just so, because the foam brushes, you know, go out to you guys and they're expensive. So I try not to use them too much. So once you have a good coat of white on here, just, it's gonna be covered up with um, a stripe as well. So just make sure you can see where your stripe marks are. For some reason mine aren't, I'm covering mine up. There we go. For some reason it was just very thick. So nice thin strokes all the way out. Got a little bit on my flagpole here. Now this part around the section here is white as well. So you wanna kind of get this corner here and right here is all white. Right on the edge here, not the flagpole, just this part. So make sure you get that white too. This part doesn't matter because you're gonna cover that up with this. So this part doesn't really matter. So you can cover it up. So once you get that painted, you're gonna set that aside to let it dry. Then you're gonna need one of your um, foam brushes. And we're gonna make these white. Now, uh, if you decide to do your letters another color, you can make them any color you want, but I'm gonna make mine brown like the picture and I'll show you in just a minute. But we're gonna tap on the white here. Using the skinny side to hold on to, hold and using the fat side to put the paint on. Now, there's not a lot of paint on my brush. So, what, I mean, on my makeup sponge. So what I did was I put some on there and then I kind of um, twisted a little bit off on the side of the plate, just so it's not super thick on there. So when you are tapping this onto the stars, uh, you don't have a ton of paint on there. So it doesn't fall over the edges. If it does fall over the edges, it's okay. You could do one or two things. You can use your damp paper towel, wet wash cloth, whatever you got going on there, or baby wipe. And you can just take it and you can go around the edges like this and clean it up. Because you wanna kind of see the, the black around the edges. It just makes it look a little bit better. You know, as far as, um, layering it and stuff. It just gives it a cleaner look. 
don't get me wrong, I mess up all the time and I get stuff over the edges, so it's okay. Happens to me frequently. So I'm kind of bummed that the recording didn't make it on the thing last time. I don't know what happened, but it didn't. I mean, I know what happened, the storage was full, but I don't know, it happens quickly, I guess, because I did two three hour classes back to back. I didn't take them off yet. So once you have a coat of this on for one time, go ahead and set your stars aside. and let them dry for a minute and just make sure. Now look at your flag again, just make sure you're happy with the way it looks. If you feel like you need a little bit more white on it, feel free to kind of brush on a little bit more. Remember, you're gonna have the stripes on it, so you don't need it to be perfect and you want, it kind of, you want it to kind of look a little vintage and rustic anyways. The only place I'm really gonna focus on the white is like around the edges because it's more the edge of the flag. The other part's gonna be more disguised, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm gonna set that aside again. I'm gonna check my stars again, see if I need a second coat, probably just a very small second coat, thin second coat, so that they look a little brighter. So you can see a difference when you do second coat on them, but the trick is to let it dry for a minute because if you're putting another wet layer of paint on top of another wet layer of paint, it doesn't tend to stick as good. So if you give it just a minute to dry, that second coat tends to stick a lot better. And stay down for you. And I was trying really hard to get the whole setup that I had, the you know, the the porch leaner and everything ready for a picture on Monday, but it just didn't happen. So with that being said, I'm really gonna try hard tomorrow during the day when I have a little bit more time to get that set up for you guys. My days have been very compacted going back to the assisted living facilities, which is good because I really like doing it. I really like working with the elderly and bringing them joy and bringing art to them. So I've been focusing a lot on them lately because they're opening up and, you know, and then I have had applications and background checks and all kinds of stuff to do. I'm fully vaccinated now which some people aren't getting vaccinated and that's completely okay. But in the job that I'm doing, I think it's important for them that I am. So, and also, you know, some people can't medically. So I understand that. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take a little bit of blue and we're gonna paint this. So I'm using the dark blue that I gave you in your kit. Maybe if I can find it. it is. And the reason we're using the dark blue is because the, the truck is a lighter blue. And I don't wanna, I wanna, I wanna have enough contrast with that. So if you only have a couple of makeup sponges, just cut one, but you can use a makeup sponge to put this on. And some of them did not have the stars cut out for some reason. So I don't know why they did on some and not on the others, but some of them don't have star shapes and some of them do. So go ahead and use your makeup sponge and you're gonna take your dark blue and paint this on. I think that these are cut by different people at the wholesaler and some do that stuff and some don't. So. 
I had about half that weren't cut out and half that were. But it's okay, you don't really need this, the cutouts there to place them down. I mean, it gives you a little bit more flexibility too. So go ahead and put one coat of the dark blue on there. Now, if you want a second coat on there, you can put a second coat. It just makes it look a lot darker. So that's up to you if you want to. But just again, let that dry for a second because that's the key is letting everything dry. And then we're gonna take another makeup sponge and we're gonna do a deep red on this. I have to reorganize my plate over here. So give me just a second. Didn't bring my water in here for my brushes or for myself. So if I get a little raspy, that's why. Drink my old coffee here from breakfast. As my grandmother says, you will put hair on your chest. Not that I want hair on my chest as a girl. So what I'm gonna do here is because these are all going on the flag, I'm kind of squeezing them together. And the reason I'm doing that, it just makes it easier for you to get a little bit more accomplished all at once. And again, I'm using the skinny side of my makeup sponge to hold on to, and I'm using the fat side to pounce it down. And I'm not using a lot of pressure. I'm not using a lot of paint. I'm just kind of gently tapping it on here. And look at how easy that is. It gives you all of that all at once. So as you can see, it's not super full with paint. I'm just tapping it on, spreading it out. You can rub too if you want. If you want to rub it, you can. I just tend to find that when you tap it on, I don't know why, it makes it darker. And it gives you more coverage. So it's up to you, whatever you want to do. I like the tapping part. And it's a good arm workout for you. So I'm gonna do this side. I'm just gonna flip it around and hold the other side. Now these four season signs that I've been doing, the winter, spring, summer, fall, with the big base that are, takes about three hours to do. This is come in handy with the letters. Um, you know, we've been doing this with the letters, but we've been using a popsicle stick to hold it down, which believe it or not, is very effective. Let's do that class one more time this week. It'll be an interactive class though, not just a recording, even though we record it. But they'll be asking questions and talking, hopefully. That makes it a little bit more exciting. So once you get this done, all the red on there, you're going to let it dry. So just, you know, go ahead and blend your lines together here. And if you feel like you need a second coat, what you can do is just flip it around. And by the time you get to the other side, you'll be able to put a second coat there too. Second coats tend not to be as much paint. So just tap it on here. Right, so we're gonna let this dry for just a second. And while this is drying, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go check on our blue, see if it's dry. Now, if you want a second coat on here, you can, but what I am gonna do is see the little bit of white left on here. And as you see in the picture, there's a little bit of distressing on the blue part. And before I put the stars on, I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna take this little bit of white, tap some off on my napkin, make sure it's not too thick. And I'm just gonna lightly brush it around the edges here. And the way that I'm doing that is so that you can get like just a little bit of distressing on there. And I'm lightly just taking this foamy brush and just gently brushing it and then slightly dragging it across. And it gives you just a little bit of distress in the flag. 
and it's not any hard pressure. It's just very light and it's however much you want. If you don't wanna have any distressing in there, don't do this part, just skip over it. But this is just kind of like the picture. So this is why I'm doing it for you so you can see it, but see how it just distresses it just a little, not a lot. So now while we're waiting for this to dry, cause we're gonna distress that too, we're gonna take our stars or we're not going to yet. We're gonna distress those as well. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take our welcome because we need a little bit of our brown. So let's let this dry, this dry, and we'll get our letters. So this is, these are drying, these are drying. Now, I like to lay mine out ahead before I start painting them. And the reason I like to do that is because so I can make sure I have all my letters going the right way. Because I've been notorious for putting them upside down, the wrong way, whatever. And painting them that way and then having to repaint them the other way. So just to save myself a step. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the brown I gave you in the kit. Again, we're gonna use a makeup sponge, holding onto the skinny side, using the fat side, not putting a lot on there, but I'm gonna just kind of rub it on. And the reason I'm rubbing it on is because we're gonna end up taking a lot of it off and I want it to be light. So you're gonna do, I would try, you can do all the letters, but I'm gonna do mine one at a time. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I wanna get, the paint back off before it gets too dark. Because I want it to have that stained look. So again, I'm taking a baby wipe. You can use a wet paper towel, a washcloth, and I'm just going back over it. And as you can see, I'm rubbing off some of the paint. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want it to look like it's stained and not painted. And see the effect it gives you? It gives you like a vintage look here. Oops. One guy has a little bit of splinters hanging out here, so be careful. You can have a little splinter on yours too. So that's what I do for that. So you just, if you do one letter at a time, it tends to work a little bit better and you don't have to press as hard when you're taking it back off. And again, if you don't have baby wipes, you can always you know, use a wet washcloth, paper towel. Not wet, wet, like damp wet. When I say wet, I gotta clarify. If you use a completely soaking wet item on your board, it could do a little bit of damage. You don't wanna do that. We're gonna to continue to do this for all the letters. Make sure your fingers are clean. I have some white on my hand and it keeps picking up all my letters. Oh, my C has a little chip out of it. Huh. All right, makes it look vintage. And your O, to make sure that the laser part usually has some sort of dark trail on the back, just to make sure you got it going the right way. Not every single time, but nine out of 10 times it does. Generally, when they laser cut the letters, you can see some sort of burn mark on the back of your item. So that's how you can kind of know it's going the right way. Now, if you want these to be darker and you don't want to take the paint up and you like the brown, just leave it. You don't have to take the paint back up. I just like the look of the stain look, so that's why I'm taking it back up, but that's completely up to you. If you want to do your letters dark navy, if you want to do your letters red, there's options. You have options. You have plenty of paint to do either or. 
The letters don't take very much paint at all. So whatever color you have left over, you can use. You have choices. Okay, so once you get done with these, you're gonna let them dry. So in your picture, you have on your flag pole here, where am I doing with my flag? Here it is. This, this part is brown, the pole part. So what you wanna do is you wanna take your tape, if you have any on at all, and reverse it. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your makeup sponge and just do your flag pole right here on the edge. And this one, I'm not gonna wipe off. I'm gonna leave it the darker brown so it looks like a wooden pole. So I did that. Now, before we go any further, there is some distressing in the flag. So before we put the red down and everything else, so I'm gonna take this same makeup sponge that I've been using and I'm just gonna lightly drag it around on this part of my flag. And the reason I'm doing that is it gives it that vintage look, that older look, and I'm just kind of barely touching it, but just giving it just a little bit distressing look. And you can do this part if you want. Some people don't like the distressing look, so it's up to you. Taking my tape off and just lightly pressing down. So it's giving just a little bit of the brown on the edges and in there, this part again is gonna be covered up. Remember, this is gonna be covered up. So don't worry about that part. It's just more on the edges. And if you find that you don't like it and it's too much distressing, you can go back with your white sponge and just kind of brush over it in some places. So if you feel like it's too much brown or you don't like it, or you wanna give it more of an antique look, Give it a little bit more of that. Now the same goes true for the stars. The stars have more of like a distressed look, but it's more of a kind of off the corners of them. So if you wanna do that, you can take a few and put a little bit of brown on there. Um, on the edges is where I'm putting it. And again, not a lot of pressure, just very little. And it's just giving it that older look. It's not taken away from the stars. It's just giving them just a little bit of that antique look. Whatever you choose to do. And I have very light touch. So it's almost like I'm barely tapping my stars. Let me get rid of this tape. And I'll hold them up closer for you so you can see them. You see how I just barely topped it, gave it just a little bit of texture. Oops, a little guy wants to stick on me. And that's completely up to you if you want to do that part. And again, if you hate it, you don't like it, and you want to take it away, just take your white sponge and go back over it and just give it another coat if you don't like the way it looks doesn't take it all away, but it takes a lot of it away. That's completely up to you. All right, so the red has a little bit of distressing on it as well, but it's more in the, um, it's in the white family. So my L looks a little blonde here, so I'm just giving a little bit of brown. So you're gonna take that white makeup sponge that you used and just kind of rub it a little bit on the red. Gives it just a little bit of distressing look. And again, if you don't wanna do that part, don't do it. Completely up to you. So what we're gonna do before we start painting our truck is we're gonna assemble our flag. This is something I learned in my last, in the last class is that I probably should have done this first so it was dry, made our lives a little easier. So I'm gonna take my glue and I'm gonna put it right on my board because it 
easier. Oh, this is actually going to be the blue. So we're going to put this on here first. We'll line that up. Play with it till you get it centered. Close as you can get. And then you can do your red stripes here. Same way, you can put it right on your board. If you wanna put it on the back of your stripes, you can. I just find it's easier to do on my board for some reason. Plus it keeps the glue down. That makes sense. Keeps it flowing the right way. This one, that one gets this one gets a little skinny. Ah, don't do that. Don't drop your stars in your in your thing. And then you can put these right on here. It'll make your life a lot easier. So now I have all that glue down. I'm just gonna go plug and play here. So some of these stars are a little different. You may have to play with it for a minute to get them in the right spots. All cut a little different. That's a good thing because they're not all the same, right? I think the two little baby stars are very similar though. This one's just a little bit tinier. And the big one, oh my God, glue on the other side. Should be all right. And they wiggle for a minute. So that's a good thing about this glue is that it wiggles for you for a little bit. All right, so as far as the stripes go, um, you can see, do I do this one upside down? No, I just did it backwards. They have the ends that match up on each side. And then some of them are cut different. So you can see where they go. Like this one goes here because you can see the end of that one. You got a piece of glue and extra spot there. That's okay. And this one goes this way. The glue dries clear, but if you have an extra spot like I do here, just take your wet paper towel and just gently wipe it and it should get most of it up, but it dries clear, so no worries. This one, does it go this way or this way? This way, it goes at the top, it goes at the top. And then the skinny little guy goes here. And then this guy goes here. I just have them all backwards because I switched them around when I painted them. So get those lined up the best that you can. Check them out. Remember this glue moves for a minute, so you can move it around. When you move one side, the other side gets out of line. There you go. And I just spin it a little bit to make sure that I get it, you know, all lined up because sometimes when you move one side, the other side moves. I think, see, like I just touched that. So then that way, you know, you got it. And I just try to bring it to the end here. Yeah. Takes a minute. And this little star doesn't seem to want to line up. Oh, there we go. I just have to spin it one more time. Okay, 
So once you get all that lined up, you're gonna just set this aside so we can dry while we're working on our other stuff. So we're gonna move the welcome over, should be pretty dry. We're gonna bring our truck back to us and put our flag up there and let it dry. So this guy is pretty fairly easy. Um, if you wanna take your tape and tape off your mirrors so that you don't get glue on them, might be a good idea. And then this part here doesn't matter because you're gonna um, put that on top. So it's not gonna really matter. So I'm just gonna move this flag up a little more so I have a little more room and move this down. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna paint our blue that I gave you for your truck. It's a different shade of blue. The lights, if you wanna tape them off, you can, that's up to you. Um, if you want to play with the tape for a second, you can tape them off. I'm just going to take a piece of tape and kind of lay it in there and then stick it down in the crack here just a little bit, just to keep myself from brushing over it or fold it backwards, whatever works best for you. Um, it's just to protect it on the bigger ones and on the smaller one, you can do the same thing if you want. Thought it was raining for a minute my air conditioner, clicking on finally. And this is just protecting them from getting painted on as much. So however you wanna do it. not stuck, stuck on there, so. Just lightly placed on. Okay, so then I'm gonna take my foam brush and you can use a regular brush too, if you want, again. And I'm gonna paint everything but the license plate. I'm gonna tape that off too. So you can tape off your license plate if you want to. If you want to go around it, you can. But I'm just going to use a piece of tape. Make it a little easier. For myself. And that's up to you if you want to do this part. And I'm just using a pair of scissors to cut my tape, get it more even at the end. This part right here, I'm not gonna paint on um, because it's gonna be on the outside. This is gonna be on the flag, so I'm not gonna worry about that. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take the blue on our brush, the lighter blue that I gave you, and you're just gonna paint all of your truck. Now, you see the lines in here, we're gonna use those accent lines. If you go over your flagpole, over this part, it doesn't show, so don't worry about it. Just get your blue on most of it so that um, when you do lay down the, the, the other piece, it shows. As far as the little tiny pieces that go on the light, that's up to you if you wanna make those blue or if you wanna make those the color of the light. That's completely your call. You're gonna go over all the blue and I just go in a little bit on the edges just in case it shows where the flag is, you don't have to. I just do that just in case with my peace of mind. So see, if you do paint over your license plate, if you have it taped off, it just gives you a little bit better flexibility there. 
And you are going to see the wood coming through on this blue, so it's not going to be perfect. Give it one good coat, let it dry, and then we're going to go over it with a second coat. But remember, you want it to look rustic, so you don't want it to be exactly perfect. The whole point of the rustic truck, right? So in here, just turn your brush upwards. Tap it on, whatever works best for you. Kind of how I put mine in there. A little bit of tapping, a little bit of rubbing. Okay, so once you have a good coat on there, I'm just kind of going back and forth here to get the flow of the wood because the wood is textured. So, you know, you have to kind of use the brush back and forth. I'm going to come over here and do this side. And again, I'm just going to go in a little bit on the flag because I don't know how much it's going to cover. Boy, better safe than sorry. And you can hold it up there in just a minute, but I would give it a second to dry before you did that. Now, if you know of anybody that wants one of these, I have a few extra. I had a few people that didn't do the club this month. So I always order the same amount and I tend to always sell them. So I don't usually stress about it, but I have a few extra. I think I have three or four left. I'd have to double check. But if you know of anybody that wants one, let me know. Send them my way. Get them hooked up and now that I have a video to do it, they can watch the video. I don't generally share the public class unless they were part of the class. So with the public, I don't usually share the class. So now what I'm doing is I'm just taking my baby wipe and I'm going around the edges just in case I went over, cleaning them up. I'm gonna push this up here to dry. And then I'm going to paint this part of my truck. Now, again, this is going to sit on top of this. So we don't really need to do a ton of the, the truck up there. But I am going to do this part. And I'm going to do in here. And you have to do on the edges here because through your lights, they show. So I'm going to go over that. So I'm going to do this top piece, obviously, because this is going to show. You want to put a good coat on this part. You definitely want to come at least down a little bit here. And again, if you have your mirrors taped off, it's probably a good thing. You're going to come over on the edges here. You don't really need to waste your paint in the middle part, but because your flagpole is going to show here, you want to at least get it down just a little bit because if you take this and you lay it back down, you got to see where your flagpole is going to end, right? So I think we got that. And plus this little hole right here, you want to cover that. So, so that works there. I'm going to put another coat here because it's soaking into the wood really good. Now on each side, you have your lights. So what I would suggest is, if you see here, you're going to probably do from the middle of your tire up. You don't have to do all of this part, but from the middle of your tire up, I would do this part because this shows from the little lights on the side. So do just a little coat here. It doesn't have to be two coats, just one because it's in the background. But this is where your lights are. 
And you should have plenty of paint to do that. This doesn't take a lot. And I know I gave you guys all a full cup. I don't even think I've used a half a cup yet. And again, that doesn't have to be two coats. That just goes under where your lights are gonna be. What I would do though, is to put just a little bit of a second coat up here on this part. And the reason you're doing that is you want your two blues to match. So while we let this dry, we're gonna take a little bit of the black with our makeup sponge. And we're gonna do our tires down here. And you're just gonna tap it on, rub it on like that. And you wanna go all the way to the top, all the way to where it touches. And the reason you're doing that is because this part is not covered up by um, the truck. Go all the way to the top. Move it up a little. So I'm just taking my makeup sponge and going from side to side. And then when I get to the top, just pulling it all the way across like that. And then that way, I know that they're painted in. Let me move this out of the way. And let's just make sure. Yep, perfect. I'm not laying it down yet. It's still gonna dry. So I'm gonna move that up. Now, this is the lights, and the bottom one is red, and the top one is yellow. And I'm 99.9% .9 sure you got all this paint in your kit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these off, the tape off. Maybe. And hopefully you have a smaller brush in your possession. If not, you can use one of the makeup sponges. But you're going to need a little bit of your yellow and a little bit of your red and a little bit of the white. And what you're going to do is you're going to mix both of these colors with a little bit of white. So you need one scoop of yellow, one scoop of white, and you're going to mix those two colors together. And you're going to do that one first. So you're going to use a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white, and you're going to put it on your light. Now, it's up to you if you want the blue to come to the light, or if you want the yellow to go all the way up. That is a personal call. I'm going to fix it so that the blue comes to the yellow, but that is your call. So you're going to do it with a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white first and you're gonna let that dry. And the reason you're doing that with the white base there is because it's gonna make the second color pop. Then you're gonna do the same thing with the red. You need one scoop of red and one scoop of white. Mix those two colors together. It's gonna make a pinkish color, but we're not gonna leave it pink. It's gonna be red. And then you're gonna paint in the second light. And if you don't have a small brush and you're worried about the um, makeup sponge being too big, which could be because I would cut it down the middle, make it smaller, but you can also use a Q-tip for this part, guys. So no need to stress. You probably have stuff right in your house that you can use. I think almost every household has Q-tips and cotton balls or cotton, some sort. I don't have cotton balls. I have those cotton rounds. <clears throat> I 
Again, if you need brushes, let me know. I'll get you set up. So this is gonna look a little pink, but we're not leaving it pink. It's just pink for right this second. We're gonna put the red right on top and this is gonna make the color pop. So I know it looks funny, very pastel-y, but it's not staying that way. All right, so what you're gonna do is just rinse out your brush. Just don't have water here, so save time and effort and energy. I'm just gonna wipe it off. Now I'm gonna lift up my tape from my license plate and I'm just gonna paint this plain white. One coat of plain white first, and then I'm gonna do a second coat. And again, if you don't have a little brush, use a Q-tip. Use your, cut your makeup sponge in half. Use that. So I honestly don't know if we gave you a brush in this kit. And I apologize if I didn't. So just assume since you guys have been with me for so long, I think it's a year now, some of you, my founding members, it's a year. But you have almost everything. Okay, so once you get one coat of the white in there, Let that dry for a second. <clears throat> and what we're gonna do while we're letting all that dry is we're gonna take our foam brush and we're gonna give a little distressing to our truck. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this brush. We're gonna tap some off, put, take some of that paint off. So you put a little bit on now you're going to take some off and I'm just going to gently glide it on here. I'm going to do it on both sides. As you can see, it gives it just a little distressing. And where the bumper and the, this part, if you want to take it and just focus on that a little bit more than the truck, it'll accent the bumper a little bit more. And if you don't like it, for some reason, you can take your wet baby wipe or paper towel and you can kind of blend it out a little bit. And I did that a little bit on the bumper part just to kind of give it a little bit of that, you know, to outline it a little bit more. That's completely up to you. just to kind of shade that in just a little bit more. You're gonna also do that distressing look on the top piece here. So move that aside while we're letting all that dry. And just up here is where you really need to focus because all this other stuff's gonna be covered up. However you wanna distress up here. And it's very little pressure, very lightly pushing down on it. And all of this is gonna be covered up. So I'm just gonna hit the bottom of the wheels a little bit. You can see here, I just did the bottom. And again, it's very little pressure, lightly dragging it across, giving it a little bit of texture. Okay. Now I'm gonna bring this back to me. And I'm gonna use my small brushes again. And I'm gonna use just the regular paint color, not the mixture. I'm gonna use just the white. I mean, just the red, just the red. And I'm gonna paint the sun right on top of the pink here. See that? See how that white and pink gives it just a nice base? 
keep those on. And I am going to go back and bring the blue to the color here when it dries in just a minute. As you can see a little bit of a natural wood there. That's okay. And I'm putting just the regular coat on here now, just the regular red, this is the deeper red. Nice coat, nice thin coat. All right, let that dry for a second. Now I'm gonna use the yellow, just the plain yellow, no white mixed into it. I'm gonna go right over that white and yellow mix. And it makes it nice and bright. Let that dry for a minute. Now, while all that's drying, I'm going to use my blue and just kind of match up here to the left to the light. So where I left off, I'm just using a tiny brush. And again, you can use a Q-tip if you don't have a brush. And just kind of bringing it up to the light, just cleaning it up a little bit. all I did. We're going to let that dry. While all that's drying, you can put a second coat in your license plate if you want, but I'm not going to because I like the rustic look. I'm just going to take a little bit of the blue and clean up my mistakes here. And I am going to use a marker and write USA in there. So once that's dry, you can use that. You can use a black marker, a red marker, a blue marker, whatever color you want. If you want to put a second coat of white in there, you can. I'm going to just do a quick one here. Maybe have it go all the same way, either up and down, left and right. thinking that the words may not show if it's not white enough. So I'm putting just a little bit more white on there because it was kind of looking like the wood. And if you don't want it to look perfect, go back and forth, side to side, up and down, like I'm doing here. I want mine to look kind of beat up and tattered. And you can paint this any color you want. So if you want your license plate to be red, you can put red and then put white letters on. You can do whatever you want. It's your, it's your project, your flexibility, your creativity. You can do silver if you want. All right, so we're gonna let that set aside for a second. So we gotta do our mirrors up here. So I believe I gave you some silver paint in your kit. And what I would do is I would just reverse your tape here. You're gonna just take your tape, reverse it. And then use your silver paint and you can use a makeup sponge. You're probably gonna need two coats of silver just because silver is a little bit opaque. silver paint and if you tap it on it definitely covers a little bit better than rubbing it on and it looks like metal more to me so put one coat of silver on and then give it a minute to dry
So tonight I have a quarter action at the American Legion because I'm going to have another one of these. I'm going to bring one with me for the disabled American veteran. So I think it'll be perfect fit. Now in the group, you probably are gonna see a couple of people wrote on their license plates. I'm not gonna write on mine for this one because um, I want whoever wins it to be able to write whatever they want on it. And I'm gonna just tell them about it. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to put these two pieces together in just a minute. Um, I was going to go put the flag on, but then I don't, I don't want to be able to not turn it around. Guess I can put it down. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to put the glue here where the flag goes. I'm going to hit just a little bit on the pole part here to make sure it sticks. I'm going to take my finger and get the excess off. I'm going to put my flag here. sure it's lined up. So the pole, you should be able to line it up where you don't see the other part of it. So just touch it with your fingers and make sure it's all lined up and it should sit pretty well right on top of there. So I'm going to let this sit there for a minute and then just give it a gentle, you know, slight push down so that you know that it's secure. And it should come all the way to the edge here and should all line up. So I'm just going to rotate and make sure my flag poles are lined up up here. So that you don't see it, you know, coming out. And it may need to go down just a little bit. So this part would be more important to be lined up for me. And then making sure below is covered. So it might hang a little bit off on the bottom and that's okay, because this is the part that's gonna show is this part up here. So just making sure all this is lined up the bottom part hanging off isn't going to show. So if it does, it doesn't matter. But just making sure the pole is lined up, the flag is lined up, and that you don't see two poles in here. You want it to kind of just be all one. So remember, the, the, the um, tight bond glue gives you that flexibility to move it around. So while that's drying, I'm going to do a second coat of my silver here. Again, tapping this on makes it fill in just a little bit better. If you want a third coat on, you can do a third coat. That's up to you. All right, so we got two coats of silver there. So now I'm gonna take this tape off just making sure I don't have any silver coming over. I do need a, just a tiny bit of blue right there, right where the sil or silver. So I think I'm gonna do the silver. Didn't, I didn't line the tape up correctly. There we go. And then I'm gonna take the glue and I'm gonna put it here to put that piece down. So I'm gonna take this. So now that it's going to go there. And then I'm going to gently move this so that your pole, your flag doesn't move too much. Spin it around. Now, if you want to put a little more on, which I think I'm going to on the edges here, make sure I have it covered.
And I'm not putting a ton of glue there. It's just like a bead of glue. <clears throat> and placing this on top. And again, lining this up with the bottom and making sure these, this little guy and this little guy are lined up. Okay. And you are gonna see the glue, the wet glue in there for a minute, that's okay, because it's gonna dry clear. But again, making sure this is lined up. If this is over just a little tiny bit, it's okay. But just making sure it's all lined up. So now I'm gonna push this way up to the top to let it dry for a minute. And I'm gonna get my base, get all my stuff out of the way, all my sponges. Brushes, but baby wipes. So that's not going to be dry right away for us to put down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out my letters. You can angle them like this. around them, I should say. Or you can make them perfectly straight across like this. Whatever works best for you. What you want to do is you want to take your truck and you want to just use it as a guide first. You're not going to glue it down yet because you're going to need to let it dry for a few more minutes. So all the layers dry. You're going to put it where this bumper kind of lines up with this line and you have just a little tiny bit of whiteboard showing here. Not much because it kind of fits really snug down here to the end of the board. So kind of like the top of your bumper should hit right here on these lines. So just right even, that's how I line it up. And then maybe the top of the truck here. So again, if you wanna angle your letters up like this, you can do that. or you can put them straight across. I kind of like the curve because I saw Sam did this on hers and I liked it. So I'm gonna think I'm gonna do this one this way. Copying you, Sam. So I like that. So you're gonna leave your truck there just so you can see it and you wanna make sure you have everything straight. So make sure your two holes are right there in the middle. I know on the camera it doesn't look straight, but it is. Because my camera's not straight. So your best bet is to line everything up on the board with the, the grooves. That way you know you have everything straight. You'll see on your truck that the top is sh straight across here. The bumper hits right about the same spot. And you're just gonna eyeball it where this hits right about the same spot. Just so you can make, make sure everything, now this isn't dry yet. So we're not picking this up and tilting it over to put the glue on the bottom yet. We're gonna let it dry. But while we're doing that, we're gonna put our letters on. And you're just gonna put a little bit of glue on the back here. And then place them down where you want them. And again, this dries clear, so don't worry about it showing. Some comes out. And you have a minute to move it if you need to. Not putting a ton of glue on. I'm 
the door hanger club, you have the big tight bond, quick and quick and thick glue, which I love for the wood shapes. If you get the kit and you're not part of the door hanger of the month club, you're going to get E6000 tubes, two of them, I believe. All right. I like the letters like this on this one, and you can move them around a little, space them out. And then when the truck dries, we're going to glue this down. So I would give it a few minutes. It's still not all the way dry to kind of flip it over to put the glue on the back, but it will be soon. So I'm going to let it dry for a few more minutes and then I'm going to do that. And you're going to put your bow on and you're, you're going to put your string on, then your bow on. So here's our bow. And I'm going to put mine on this side just because the W is bigger. And then I'm going to tie my string in there. And I believe you all know how to do that because we've done it a hundred times before, but if you need help with that, just let me know and I'll be more than happy to help you. All right, thanks everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.